Osama bin Laden's journey toward jihad and global terrorism began in Saudi Arabia in 1957. He was the 17th of more than 50 children of a self-made billionaire. Osama was more religious than the rest of us. He did not like to listen to music or to watch TV. Most of his brothers were educated abroad, but Osama stayed in Saudi Arabia. Then, in 1979, Soviet troops invaded Afghanistan, and Osama bin Laden found his calling, helping the Afghans fight their jihad, holy war, against the Communists. First, he raised money, used expertise gained from the family's construction business. Then, he took up arms. I've talked to eyewitnesses of the battles that Osama bin Laden was involved in, and whatever your views about him, um, I, he's not a coward. After the Soviets were chased out, bin Laden founded al-Qaeda, the base, and turned toward a global jihad. The new enemy was America, which ironically had funded the Afghan resistance against the Soviets. When Saddam Hussein's Iraq invaded Kuwait in 1990, bin Laden went to the Saudi royal family and offered his followers to defend the holy sites of Mecca and Medina. Instead, the Saudis invited in U.S. troops. When U.S. troops were placed in Saudi Arabia as a result of Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait, that really that was a kind of turning point for Osama. Bin Laden was kicked out of Saudi Arabia, spent several years in Sudan, where he started training camps for al-Qaeda. He was booted out of there and fled to Afghanistan, where in 1997 he did an interview with CNN, making it clear he was targeting the U.S. unless it got its troops out of Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have focused declaration of jihad on striking at the U.S. soldiers inside Arabia, the country of the two holy places, Mecca and Medina. A year later, bin Laden publicly declared war on the U.S. He wanted it to end its support for Israel, its boycott of Iraq, and to get out of Saudi Arabia. Jihad is mentioned here. It is to mean carrying the weapon and to kill those Americans. Weeks later, al-Qaeda launched suicide attacks on the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. U.S. plans to grab bin Laden in Afghanistan never made it to President Clinton's desk, and the emboldened al-Qaeda launched another attack in 2000 on the USS Cole, killing a number of sailors. Then 9-11, attacks inside the United States. Later, bin Laden would gloat that the plan succeeded beyond his imagination. They were overjoyed when the first plane hit the building, so I said to them, be patient. But bin Laden, who had been contemptuous of America, had overreached. The U.S. invaded, and bin Laden became a man on the run. He was last seen by people not within his inner circle at the Battle of Tora Bora in November and December of 2001 and believed to have been wounded there by the U.S. bombing. But he escaped. Intelligence officials believed he was likely in Pakistan. From then on, bin Laden communicated with his followers online and through numerous audio and video messages, attempting to keep himself relevant even in hiding, all the time warning the West that al-Qaeda would attack again. We want to restore our Islamic nation's freedom. Just as you violate our security, we violate yours. Bin Laden's legacy, I think, is a kind of an ideological way of looking at the world, which he's communicated to a lot of people, which I don't think is going to go away. But now, finally, news that the world's most wanted man has been killed. Jonathan Mann, CNN.